I think I've only written about two Christmas letters in my life. It just feels like bragging to tell about the great things that I've done during the past year and all the good things that happened to me. Well, this year I think it's probably time I'm going to write my third Christmas letter. Not to tell about all those cool things, but to mention some of the things that didn't happen during this year. Like the trip to France I didn't take. To be part of a pilgrimage to the lands of Dominic. You see, last year, my name was drawn in a lottery from my religious community of Dominicans to go on this pilgrimage. All expenses paid, except for souvenirs, of course. So since October of last year, I've been mentally packing my suitcase and making a mental note of all the people I'd be sending postcards to. Needless to say, the trip was canceled relatively early on in 2020. Oh, I guess I should mention something that did happen this year. A uh, derecho. Remember that? Or if you weren't here for it, do you even know what it is? A land hurricane. Who knew there was such a thing? It happened in August on a Monday, my day off. I was home, and as I watched from the picture window in my apartment, I thought to myself, if I were in Florida right now, I'd think this was a hurricane. As I watched my lawn chair literally sail down the alley, and the big trees in my neighbor's yard snap off huge branches and heard debris hitting the sides and the roof of my apartment, I have to admit, I was pretty scared. It lasted for a two-hour-long half hour. I didn't have electricity for 10 days, although I have to admit, I was blessed to have a landlord who hooked up a generator to keep our refrigerators running cell phones charged, and even a small fan to keep me cool enough to sleep at night. Another thing I did experience this year, which I never could have imagined in a million years, is a worldwide pandemic. Several generations came and went without never having had that happen, like the last one was 100 years ago. Well, actually, there have been other pandemics in my lifetime, like AIDS and SARS, but they certainly didn't impact my life like COVID-19 has. Businesses, schools, and even churches eventually were closed so that we could supposedly get the coronavirus under control. That never really happened. Early news programs was bad news. And each day, there was an ever-increasing number of sick, hospitalized, dying, and deceased. And they were always at the top of the newscasts and in the headlines of the papers. We were given guidelines to protect ourselves and others from infection, wear masks, wash your hands frequently, use sanitizer on surfaces, and keep at least six feet of distance between ourselves and others. I think we did sort of okay in the beginning, but sooner or later, a certain kind of fatigue set in for many, and things have gotten continually worse. Well, this is not the kind of stuff people want to read in a Christmas letter. As my mom would say, I lived that. I don't need to do it again. So I'm going to shift my focus. The things that did happen this year, like a couple of days ago, the first vaccine shown to be 95% effective was distributed in England. And here in the U.S., we're just days away from the same thing happening here. Although we're being warned not to let our guard down, help is within reach. And we've all become so much more technological, technologically savvy and capable of meeting each other in spite of great distances, both real and imposed, maybe even more often. Like when we weren't able to attend Mass, we could be present with others through the miracle of cyberspace and YouTube. Although many couldn't celebrate birthdays or Thanksgiving with family and friends, they could Zoom together. What a blessing. Our parish priests have published on YouTube a gospel reflection every day in English and in Spanish just about every day since all of this began. And as for the derecho, our community is that much stronger because we shared that disaster and no one was spared. It wasn't just one sector of Marshalltown. We all experienced the days-long blackout, and we're still here. No one was seriously hurt physically. And thanks be to God, there was no loss of life. Maybe the best thing that didn't happen this year is that God didn't ease up on the blessings he showers on us all the time. My nephew, Ben, and his wife, Kayla, 
In spite of COVID restrictions on their work, Ben is in banking and Kayla is a mental health counselor, have both successfully completed programs of study in their fields. And the best news, they're expecting their first baby in May. It's a boy. And Ben's twin sister, Stephanie, became a mom for the second time. Sawyer Jeffrey entered the world on 10, 15, 20. Finally, a birthday I can remember. Another huge thing that didn't happen this year is that in spite of the rampant coronavirus, no one, I'll knock on wood, in my family circle, including a niece who works in a hospital in Wisconsin as a nurse anesthetist, has gotten sick from it. As I said, it's been a year of abundant blessings. I heard it said once, if you don't get everything you want, think of all the things you don't want that you don't get. Isn't that true? So it's been a year of things that did and didn't happen. But then isn't every year that way? As we bring 2020 to an end, let's give thanks to our loving God who continues to give us life and fill that life with every good thing because it is all good. Even when it looks to us like maybe it's not. Just wait. You'll see.